this is TOS Television, your digital force for an African news network. I am Abigail Okwade and this is Africa Now. South Sudan's government has promised to end child marriage by 2030 in line with the African Union's campaign to end child marriages in the continent. South Sudan is one of 40 countries in the world with the highest rate of child marriages. 52% of all girls in the country are married before 18 years of age, depriving them of their basic rights and for some, even their lives. If a political agreement signed between Sudan's Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok and the military last week is not implemented or fails to receive backing from political factions, the Prime Minister will quit, a source close to him said on Wednesday. Hamdok was released from house arrest and restored to his position under the deal reached on November 21, four weeks after he was removed in a coup. The agreement allows Hamdok's appointment a new techno technocratic government and calls for the release of political detainees and investigations into crackdowns or protests in which medics say 43 people died. Now in the town of Lalibela, a United Nations World Heritage Site is the latest in a string of towns the military has retaken and the Ethiopian government forces and their regional allies have recaptured from Tigrayan forces, the Prime Minister's office said on Wednesday. The capture of Lalibela, home to ancient rock-hewn churches and a holy site for millions of Ethiopian Orthodox Christians is a significant symbolic gain for the government. On Wednesday, Abe's office said Ethiopian soldiers also now control the town of Shewa, Robit and eight other towns and villages. Now to health matters. COVID-19 pandemic may cause an increase in new infections and deaths from HIV and AIDS and disrupt preventive measures, says UNAIDS Executive Director Winnie Bayima in the pre-recorded interview that aired on World AIDS Day. Bayima is also United Nations Under Secretary General said fewer people opted to be tested and some dropped out of treatment because of long lines at clinics or other public safety measures that impeded access to preventive measures during the first pandemic phase in particular. Research shows that people with HIV are no more likely than others to become infected with the virus that causes COVID-19, but that once infected, they are at much higher risk of severe illness. Now the Omicron COVID-19 variant is able to get around some immune protections to cause infection, but the protection against severe disease and death from vaccines should be less affected, the latest report from South Africa's surveillance network said. The latest official report on Wednesday showed that Omicron, which has raised global fears of a surge in infections, has been detected in five out of nine South African provinces and was likely to be present all over the country. This is your Digital First Pan-African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. Business and more coming your way after the break. So stay tuned. Welcome back in business. The South African rand and stocks continued their recovery on Wednesday from last week's plunge as risk appetite returned somewhat to market, with investors betting that the Omicron COVID-19 variant would not derail the economic recovery. At 15.11 GMT, the rand traded at 15.7950 against the dollar 0.61%, firmer than its previous close. The currency plunged to its weakest since October 2020 on Friday, breaching 60.00 to the dollar as the world reacted with alarm to the news of the variant which was first detected in Southern Africa. Now the World Bank urges a more gender-inclusive recovery in Uganda, with women at the center of the country's economic growth is expected to be between 3.5% and 4.0% in fiscal year 2022 and about 5.5% in fiscal year 2023. Richard Walker, a senior economist, said even with higher growth prospects, per capita GDP will remain well below the target of the third national development plan, meaning Uganda will now take longer to become a lower middle income country. I'm moving away from business. Poverty, poor infrastructure and natural weather variability are bigger contributors to Madagascar's food crisis than climate change, according to a study released on Thursday by International Research Collective World Weather Attribution. In October, the United Nations said the drought and food shortage in Madagascar could become the world's first climate change famine, with a recent UN climate report showing increased aridity in Madagascar. More than 90% of people in southern Madagascar live in poverty, and farmers rely on each rainy season. 
Now the government of Zimbabwe has urged its citizens living in neighboring South Africa to adhere to the country's administration's decision of not extending their Zimbabwe exemption permits beyond 2022. South Africa's decision is a culmination of heavy rioting, protests and petitions by a section of its citizens who have called for the unconditional flushing out of foreigners whom they blame for a rise in crime rates and increased drug abuse. They have over the years blamed them for taking all their employment opportunities. Now the parliament in Mauritius has passed an amendment bill that seeks to introduce new regulations for independent media despite some opposition from campaign groups that say it will restrict media freedom. The Independent Broadcasting Authority amendment bill was passed without amendment on Tuesday night. The government said the amendment was in order to provide a better legal framework to regulate the licensed media. And that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube to stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Okwade. Thanks for watching.